Anthony? Yeah. Where was Bolognese invented? Bologna. There you go. It's like who was buried in Grant's tomb. I'm glad he got that one. Hi, I'm Anthony Contrino. I'm from Staten Island, New York. I'm a food stylist for the Today Show. A lot happens behind the scenes before 8 in the morning. You have it by so the you sink. don't risk cutting your hand. Cutting your yeah, hand. exactly. exactly. <laughs> okay. My job is to make food look pretty for the camera. But the cooking doesn't stop after the show is over. I'm always serving up food for my friends and family. And these eggplant bowls are always on the menu. Welcome to the 1A Studio Kitchen. I know you guys have seen what happens on TV, but I'm gonna show you what happens before the cameras start rolling. So right now, I'm preparing a segment for Bobby Flay, who's one of our Today Show regulars. I get nervous every time I do a live demo, because it's live. So anything is bound to happen. Just wanna make sure that you get through it in the best way and have fun with it. Bobby's gonna be making his eggplant bolognese, which sounds delicious. I've been a fan of Bobby's for a long time, and it's crazy that I get to cook with him. I first met him over 10 years ago. A lot of people don't realize how much preparation goes into making just four minutes of live TV. What they don't understand about the live segments is that um, there's people like these guys, like Anthony and Katie, who are like doing all the prep. It makes our lives very easy. We didn't get here at 2 o'clock in the morning this morning and start like, you know, prepping eggplant for the bolognese. And they do their best job to make us look good. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do with these vegetables is I'm going to prepare enough for the actual demo. So as Bobby's actually cooking this on camera, he's going to not have time to chop all these vegetables. So it'll be done for him in bowls and then he could just dump them right into his Dutch oven. But I also need to make enough for swaps. What swaps are is just that, a swap of a finished product. While we do have a set kitchen, the only prep we really do up there is prep the day of a segment. Everything else food-wise that you see on this show is prepared in this small space. Thank the Lord for peeled garlic. Like, nobody got time for that. This is only gonna cook for about 40 minutes or so. Welcome to the 1A Prop Room. I'm gonna pull all the equipment and beauty plates that we need and we'll load up a cart with some of the food. Jay's gonna help me and we're gonna schlep it upstairs and set up for the segment. Excuse us, Hoda. Right. I don't know what she's doing here. I always pull a few options for plating and setup. Any prop we use should highlight the food, not distract from it. Let's call it a day down here. We're gonna head upstairs and set. Obviously we can't put food out today. It's the day before the segment. It would go kind of bad, but we put post-its in its place so that in the morning when I come in, I don't really have to think about what I need to do. Everything's labeled and I just can get to work and start filling. Every ingredient and every action that includes an ingredient is listed in this little stack of papers. The day before a segment is usually pretty calm, but you never know what might happen when the pressure's really on the next morning. We're back. It's the day of the segment, and we're about two and a half hours away from Bobby cooking live on the show. So the recipe calls for six of these baby eggplants, so I'm probably gonna use around 20. Set a timer for... 48 minutes. Okay, so I'm gonna start filling in things. We always start with the non-perishable items because those can sit for ever. What do you do when you cook eggplant? Do you take the skin on or you take like, It depends what I'm making. A lot are you of Italian? I am. My grandmother was Sicilian. So what does she do? She leaves the skin on. Step by step, I explain how I recreated the chef's recipe and make sure it works with their personal style. So you're gonna add your eggplant first and then fold it in. I'm going by your recipe. Either way. Yeah, yeah. Like the tomatoes and the eggplant have to become friends in the pan. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Salt, pepper, and then obviously a nice chunk of Parmigiano Reggiano for you to finish. Okay. And then are these I'm utensils? Gonna, I'm gonna do a Giada tip. I'm gonna give you a little Giada De Laurentiis tip. Oh yeah. Because she gave me this tip and every time I use the tip and don't credit her, I uh -oh. get a text. What's up, Staten Island? 
That's where I'm from. You are? Yeah. <laughs> Tottenville. We have so much in common. I always feel like part of the family here. I know all the hosts and you know the people behind the scenes as well. So it's it's uh it's something I look forward to doing, you know, when you get the today show call. Everything's done. Now we get to watch it, like the rest of you guys. Did you ever wonder what Bobby Flay's kitchen is like? Well, wonder no more. The superstar chef is giving us a glimpse inside and revealing the recipes he cooks for his closest friends with his new book. It's called Bobby at Home. It's always a good sign when the peeler actually works. Do you keep the skin on or do you take it off? Yeah. I'm taking half of it off, so I strike oh. it. It's always a little nerve-wracking to watch, but Bobby is a total pro. I love when people like Bobby come on because they know how to manage their time and they get through the entire recipe, which is great for us because we put a lot of work into it and we want to see everything happen. Well done. Yeah, it was good. When the show is over, the Today crew gets to enjoy the leftovers. And I've got the perfect recipe to use up any leftover eggplant. My grandmother's from a small mountain town in Sicily and eggplant is a quintessential ingredient there. While this might not be super traditional Italian, this is my family's go-to eggplant recipe, our eggplant balls. This is actually my dad's recipe, and he's been making them as long as I can remember. Because you can make these ahead of time, we make them all the time for pretty much any holiday family gathering. So all we're going to do is remove the top and bottom of our eggplant. I'm gonna give it a little peel. Get yourself a peeler that doesn't make you wanna kill yourself like this one. Now the skin is edible, but for this recipe, we're going to use the eggplant as a filling, so we want it to be really creamy and luscious, and that skin will just ruin that for us. A fresh eggplant should not give you too much resistance. If you're getting caught, that means the flesh is too soft and your eggplant is going bad. This is gonna sound weird, but I love the feel of this. They're like little sponges. So I kind of want to play with them, but I'm not going to because awkward. We just want to get them into manageable pieces so that when we make our filling later, it's nice and uniform. That's it. Would that take like 45 seconds? And I was doing it slow for you people. Let's get this cooking. So when you first add the eggplant, it's going to float. Eggplant is basically a giant sponge, which means that it's buoyant, so it's gonna rise to the top. But just use a spider and push it down periodically until it basically is waterlogged. So it's been about 15 minutes and our eggplant is done. See how it's just kind of collapsing on me when I push it down? It's done. I do not want it to be falling apart because I wanna keep some texture in my eggplant balls. So I'm gonna add some weight to this so that it presses down on the eggplant and gets rid of as much moisture as possible. Give it a gentle little push. You can see it's working already. I'm gonna throw this in the fridge for at least two hours, but really guys, 24 hours overnight is ideal. So come back tomorrow to see the rest. JK, glad we learned about swaps, because I have one right here. You can see that most of the water has been pressed out of the eggplant, and it's the perfect texture for what we're looking for to make our eggplant balls. So I just work one piece at a time, and I just, with my fingers, push down on it and let it kind of mash itself. Done. And totally get your kids involved in this. Really fun, they love slimy stuff. It's the only reason I'd have a kid. Just to like, do for me. It's terrible. Done, how easy was that? Let's grab our remaining ingredients. Some breadcrumbs, some red pepper flakes, some garlic powder, pepper pepper, my favorite, some pecorino. I love that everything comes together in this one bowl at this point. Limits clean up, I don't have a dishwasher, in case you didn't notice, and it's not in the budget. Just saying. While I have this out, I'm gonna measure out my remaining half a cup of breadcrumb. We're gonna roll our eggplant balls in this, and that's gonna give it its nice, crispy exterior. Guys, these are so good, I'm like, so excited. Like, I can't even tell you. Last but not least, to bind everything together, an egg. You wanna crack your egg on a flat surface, 
Most people do this, you're shooting the shell into the egg and there's a better chance of it winding up in your bowl. If you do it on a flat surface, you get a nice little flat piece to work with and no shell. I kind of just fold it over itself until everything's incorporated. You can see I still have larger pieces of eggplant. I'm totally cool with that. I don't mind those secret little surprise pockets of eggplant when I bite into my eggplant balls. I found that the secret amount is two ounces, which is basically in between a golf ball and a billiard size ball. Take our reserved breadcrumb, give it a nice toss, reshape it just a little bit. You don't want to really knock off that breadcrumb. And then just a gentle little pat. That'll help it cook a little bit more evenly. It's crazy because my dad literally makes them all the same exact size every time. That's where I get my OCD from. So this is my last one. Just gently add them in. Takes about three to four minutes per side. We're frying. Don't overcrowd your pan. Otherwise, you're gonna lower the temperature of your oil and it's gonna take longer to cook and it's gonna absorb more oil and will be soggy. You wanna cook them until they're golden brown. It smells so good. While the second batch is cooking, it's time to taste. I, just, I can't wait. See how creamy it is? There's still some of those chunks of the eggplant. It's hot but delicious. Mm. The hardest part about this recipe is not eating all the ones that you've made while you're waiting for the next batch. Look at this guy. Beautifully golden brown, crispy on the outside, creamy on the inside. Sorry, Dad. Mine are definitely better.